Hello everyone, my name is Grace Farrow. I am a Solid Edge Application Engineer here for ProLim, and today we're going to be taking a look at KeyShot inside Solid Edge. So very quickly we'll go over the agenda. Uh, we're going to look at how to transfer the models and materials from Solid Edge to KeyShot. We're going to apply various materials to components. We're also going to um, insert a background image. We're also going to look at how to adjust the camera perspective and then we're going to create a composite rendered image. So a little bit more information about what KeyShot is. It's a real-time rendering software. It's already integrated in Solid Edge so once you um, once you get the software, it's already in there for you. And it's being increasingly used as a rendering tool to create photorealistic visualizations of products as they evolve throughout development to speed up uh, concept approvals, identify problems, and sell products. So we're gonna go ahead and get into a demonstration now. So this is the example I've chosen to use. It's my brake pedal assembly and just to get started, our key shot tool is under our tools tab at the very end over here. Uh, we have key shot render, we also have key shot update, and then we do have our key shot options. So this is just a little quicker and easier way to kind of update some of our options here. Uh, we are going to take a look at those as well inside the actual key shot render software. So go ahead and we're going to select that and it's going to be pulling that assembly in and this is going to be an example of what it looks like. So to actually make this a little easier to see I am going to hit F on my keyboard so I can see this a little easier and kind of zoom in here. And the first thing we're going to be doing is applying material uh, to this image. So I'm actually going to go down to the bottom here. You can see that we do have a couple commands at the bottom as well as the top. We're going to take a look at a few of these uh, at the top and the bottom. But just to get started, I am going to select the library on the left hand side. And you can see that we have several, uh, you know, several different options here while in the library. We have materials, we can apply colors, textures, uh, we can look at environments as well as backplates. And for this example today, we're going to be taking a look at materials, colors, and um, backplates. So while we have this up, we when we look at the materials, you can see that there are several. Uh, we are actually going to go to our metal group here and you can see if we scroll down through our metal group we do have a significant amount. Um, we can actually scroll down here and just go directly to steel. Once we select steel it's going to narrow down just our steel options and then I'm also going to select basic because I want the basic steel for this example. So from here I am going to just click left click and drag on you know what kind of steel I want I have steel polish and steel rough if these icons are a little too big or too small you can actually use the uh, zoom in and zoom out feature that helps a little bit especially if you have a lot uh, so I'm just gonna left click and drag on steel rough come over to my assembly and it's going to apply that um, just at the area that I hold it in. So you can see that that changed materials. I'm going to do that again for that whole bracket. And what it's going to do is bring up uh, the link duplicate materials. It says, you know, a material with the same name is already in use. Do you want to link these materials? I'm going to say yes because it's the same bracket. Uh, so I'm just going to do that for all three sides here. Now for this example, I am going to make sure the next material that I apply, I apply it in the correct place. I am going to take my steel polish this time and I just want to apply it to the spring. But what's nice about this is if I accidentally get the component that's behind the spring, it will, uh, you know, change the material of that to kind of show me. And that's not what I want. I really just want that spring. So I just left click to place that. 
And now I also will be applying Chrome to this. So I'm just going to scroll back up here. You can, you can apply several different kinds of material as well as colors and textures. So I go up to Chrome, I'm going to select basic and again I'm going to get, you know, if I want to zoom in a little bit and so I can see the full names, I get my Chrome polish and my Chrome rough. I am going to take my Chrome polish, left click and drag and I'm just going to apply it to this brake pedal here. So I'm going to left click in place. So I'm now going to apply a color, so if I go to colors, I have, a, a, like I said before for the materials, I do have a lot of different colors. I have basics, I have classics, gray styles, um, ones for different types of metals. I am going to go um, to my basic colors here and I am just going to be applying black to the actual brake pedal. So if I come over and I just left click and drag black and I can come up here and just apply that to the brake pedal, you'll see that uh, it takes that color instantly. So this is a really easy uh, tool to use, you know, materials, colors, as well as back plates. So now we're going to be applying, you know, that back screen for us. We do have a couple different options here. We have uh, front plates, interior, outdoor, and studio. For our example today though, I am going to be selecting an interior background. Um, if I want a more warehousey look, there is a warehouse down here at the bottom. And again, I'm just going to left click and drag to apply that. Maybe if that doesn't really work with the angle here, I could try to select another one and drag that in. That's probably just a little easier for when I reposition this for the angle. So I am going to reposition my brake pedal assembly so that it's a little nicer looking in our background now. Uh, so up here at the top, there are a few um, a few tools that we're going to use to move our model. There's something called a perspective. You can actually enter in whatever value you want in here. Or if you select uh, this drop down, there is a slider. So it's a little easier to see, you know, what perspective would work well for you. For this example, 20 is our best. So I will hit 20 and enter. So before we get started at actually moving our model around, I do want to take note at the top here, we do have a couple of drop downs that I want to mention. You can see here on our model, some of the reflections, you know, from the surrounding environment, you can see it on the Chrome, you can see it here. Uh, we also have a shadow on the ground here. It's kind of light, but we can always change that. If we come up to the top, we do have um, a significant amount of options to make this tool more versatile, better for, you know, you and your company and what you want to do with your models um, in this rendering imaging software. So we have the capability of, uh, you know, s selecting different options for our background, for our shadows, for our reflections, for our lighting. Um, Maybe if I change this to interior, you're going to kind of see that update a little bit. Uh, we also have different options for camera imaging, as well as, you know, some options for rendering if you want to actually render from here or pause a real time render. Um, so yeah, a lot of different options. Um, for this example, I am just going to kind of zoom out on this guy and drag him down. That makes it a little easier to use. If I need to change my perspective a little bit, I can always do that. I'm gonna make this a little smaller and bring that in here. So again, the tools at the top will help me. I am gonna stay on tumble and I'm going to adjust this rotationally and then I can go to pan 
and I can move this across here and maybe I want to make this parallel with that line so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to tumble and adjust it here and then go back to pan and scoot it over a little bit there and that's perfect so once we have our assembly where we want it our back plate specified our material specified our colors picked um, you know just how we want it to look we are just going to render our file now. So I am going to go up to the top and exit out of library so it's a little easier. And then I'm just gonna select render down here at the bottom right hand corner. We do have uh, two tabs on the left hand side. We have output and options. Options are pretty similar to the solid edge options that we saw before. So for this output, we can say you know what we want this to be a name of if I want to change this to problem test GEP period uh, we have where it's saving to the format as well as the resolution so once I say render you're gonna see this model render uh, we do have a, a zoom feature here as well as a fit so you can make that fit it's a little easier to see we have a couple um, percentage gauges down here for you know how much has been rendered down here at the bottom we do have you know by seconds so it's it, it renders rather quickly uh, this is going to take under a minute and you can see up here there is a red X once that render is complete that will turn into a green check mark and then that will mean that the rendering is done. So we can see now it did turn into a green check mark. So I can go ahead and save this if I want to. I can go ahead and save image. And you can see here that there's already one in here, um, but you can save another one out if you want to. So prolim test GEP2 and hit save. And then once you're done with this, you don't even have to exit out. You can actually just come over here and close it through that check mark. So I am just going to take a look at that final rendered image. So I'm just going to come over here and close out um, of our key shot. You can shave those changes if you want. I am not going to. But I am going to open up that Prolem Test GEP JPEG and here is our final product. So thank you for attending today's webinar. If you'd like to re-watch this video or watch other videos like this one, you can go to the ProLim YouTube page. My name is Grace Farrow, Solid Edge Application Engineer, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.